Hearing, touch, sight, smell and taste. The five senses have an amazing way of connecting us to love and in my case, memories. Let it be is one of my dad's favourite songs. He used to listen to it on cassette on the, in the car, on loop. He used to strum on his guitar at home. And he used to sing it a cappella with my sister and I in harmony. Let It Be is written by the sea songwriter Sir Paul McCartney. And it was inspired by a dream that he had about his mother who had passed away 10 years earlier. In a TV interview that he gave on Carpool Karaoke to James Corden, he said, she gave me the inspirational words. She said, don't worry about it, just let it be. These, wor these words really resonated with me. I didn't know the story behind these lyrics until now. And it resonated with me how beautiful something could be to come out of such a terrible loss and how his mother's legacy now lives on in his songwriting, albeit from a dream. The medium of music is such a powerful tool for connecting us to those who we love, those in the present, and with those who have passed away. My dad passed away from dementia on the 16th of April, 2020. But due to the nature of the illness, I lost him a long time before that. But my talk today is not to lament his passing, but to celebrate the great man that he was, the impact that he has had on my life and the legacy that he has left behind. I lost my dad during the outbreak of COVID, which meant I was unable to travel back to the UK for his funeral, hug my mum or my sister, or have any of the normal ways of connecting during our time of grief. So we Skyped often, had an online funeral, and sent cards and flowers via online shopping. But, no touching. Then I remembered a quilt that my grandma had given to me when she passed away. I took the quilt out and it is now in honour of place in our living room at home. It is a constant presence in our lives and on those tough days I wrap it around me and it's like my dad's giving me a warm hug. It is a constant presence in our lives, it is always there and it reminds us that his memory lives on. Another constant presence in our lives is bacon. <laughs> so smell and taste give us a strong connection to memories. And my dad used to make bacon and egg sandwiches every Saturday from rain or shine. The only difference being that in our house it doesn't stay around for very long, the bacon, because it gets eaten very quickly by my two very hungry boys. And we tend to have BLTs, which are bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. I always picture my dad looking down on us going, but where's the HP sauce? You've got to have bacon patties with brown sauce on them. These five senses give me a strong connection to my dad. They give me a strong connection to my dad. Um, and when I think about him, I don't think about the materialistic things that he gave me. I think about the memories that we had, the memories that we made, the fun that we had, and the time that he gave me. Now, those of you who are on the NIS swim team, or are parents of students on the NIS swim team, know what a huge time commitment um, competitive swimming is. And in my dad's case, it was a huge time commitment, a massive time commitment. He would take me morning training at six o'clock, get back, drop me at home at 7.45, and then rush off to work on his one hour commute. Then he'd come home, get and have a quick dinner, and then straight away we'd be out to the pool again for another hour and a half training session. What I remember most about him is sitting on the poolside, eating his breakfast, reading the paper, and sat with his briefcase catching up on work. It is only now, as an adult, that I can really truly appreciate how amazing he was for giving me that time. So, I'm hoping he's going to look down on me today and acknowledge how amazing I think all of you swimmers up there and the parents. So parents, you are awesome. You are definitely the unsung heroes of the swimming world. 
Thank you, Dad. Uh, so, we connected most on our car journeys to and from swimming, training, and swim dollars. He would listen to all my teenage aunts and all my teenage problems. We would share fruit pastels and, pa fruit pastels and rollos in the car, and we'd sing a lot. And then he would help me with my homework and the many hours and hours and hours that we'd spend waiting for a one and a half minute swim race. He would suffer through algebra with me, sing through my timetables, and test me on my French vocab. And he did what dads do best, and embarrassed me. So I was doing competitive swimming during the times of the huge camp orders. He would stand in the parent stands with his video camera, and just when I was about to dive into the pool, They'd go, on your marks, get set. All you could hear was my dad's voice ringing out going, go Heidi! It was on all the camera footage when we got home to watch that until my sister videotaped over it with the Crystal Maze, the A-Team, and Doctor Who. <laughs> so, what do you want to be remembered for when people think of love? I know that for me, since my dad's passed away, it's made me really reevaluate what's important to me. So I tried to check in with my kids on their homework every single day, and I tried to carve out more family time to make fun and memories. Love and share forward. Through sharing, through sharing our stories with each other and connecting, it can change the way that we think about loss. And it can do it, can do it for a good cause. And I know that's true for me. So I'm quite a private person. I didn't tell many people that my dad had dementia or when my dad passed away. And then when my mum called me to ask me if I would do a sponsored swim to raise money for dementia and Alzheimer's, I thought, what a great way of staying connected with my family, who are in the UK, and with my dad, and doing something that I love for a cause close to our hearts. So again, being quite private, I thought I'm going to keep this small, I'm just going to ask my closest friends if they'll sponsor me. And then NIS, being the warm, caring, supportive community that you all are, words got around and it became this hugely publicised event. Initially, I felt quite embarrassed about it. I thought people will think that I'm doing it so that everyone's looking at me, oh look at Heidi, she thinks she's so amazing until I read back through all of the messages of donations. And I realized that people wanted to connect because they care about me. They wanted to connect because it was for a good cause and it was a cause close to their hearts as well. And they wanted to connect, it was during times of COVID, and they wanted to do something positive that would raise the spirit. And so hope and positivity flow throughout the community. <coughs> So on the day of the swim, it was quite a cold, wet, rainy day. And it was in a near empty pool and no supporters were allowed on the poolside. It was quite a lonely experience. But it gave me a lot of time to reflect. And when I hit what we call the wall, where it's really hard to keep on going, it got to 380 laps and I had 20 laps to go, which is when you think, oh, you're nearly there. It was very hard, those last 20 laps. That's when I really had to dig deep and I thought, First of all, my dad looking down at me saying, come on, Heidi, you can do it, you can do it. And then I thought of Jay Yong, who battles every day with Parkinson's disease. And I thought, you know what? If he can be so incredibly courageous every single day and keep on moving forward, the least I can do is finish this swim. And I thought about all those donations that people have given to me and the faith that they showed me that I could do it. But what I thought even more, it wasn't about me. It was about what it symbolized. And then the park run asked me if they um, could donate their entry free fees to dementia and Alzheimer's. People turned up because they want, they'd heard about my swim and they also wanted to do something positive. They turned up because they connected to the cause, they either knew people who'd had dementia or Alzheimer's or they'd lost people, people to it, or they turned up simply because they loved the run and they wanted to donate to the greater good. And then I was asked to do the TEDx talk today. This is my dad's legacy. And my own. Um, my dad was 
loving, caring, hardworking, creative. The way that he chose to live his life has had a huge impact on how I've cho chosen to live mine. I try to pass on, my, on to my two boys and to the students I have the privilege to teach. The way that we live our lives or the richness of our experiences are what create our legacy. So ultimately, it's the richness of our lives, our accomplishments, and the impact that we have on people and places. It is the way that we live our lives that will tell our legacy. In the words of the great songwriter, Lin-Manuel Miranda, from the final song of her hit musical Hamilton, of the hit musical Hamilton, and when my time is up, have I done enough? Will they tell my story? So, what mark do you want to leave on the world? What will your legacy be?